Okay, hello you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite, and welcome back to making tower defense games in Game Maker. So, uh, I have a little bit of explaining to do for myself as to why I said this was going to be up like six weeks ago and it hasn't been. Um, I have plenty of excuses and none of them are especially good, but anyway, uh, that is a tower defense game, and uh, in this video I'm going to be doing what a lot of people have been bothering me about doing in the past, and that is extra levels. And first I need to go and uh, clear out... See, there's a, uh, there are clear all objects, all instances, whatever. And also, I think I can do that for tiles also. So I basically just copied over the room settings and uh, a blank slate here. Uh, there's also some creation code stuff that I should probably delete, but I'll get to that later. So first, if you'll give me a moment, I'm going to go and draw another level. Tile sand, yes. And let's see, I don't have anything in, in particular in mind. Except I think I was thinking of going for like a spiral sort of shape earlier. Um, with maybe a little bit of a zigzag in it. To make it look like I'm not completely dry on uh, inspiration. Maybe like that. There's a hole in the path up here, which I would like to fix. There we go. Also, <clears throat> I'm going to need to go with this another path. So, level 2 path. And... Uh, let's go and delete all of these. Why did I, like, copy it instead of making a new one? Uh, room 1. I should go probably and uh, rename this to something useful. But, for now, this is just going to be room 1. Let's see. Alright. So I'm just going to go and trace the corners here, right in the middle of the squares. No. There we go. It's going to have more nodes than the other one did, but I think since there is more like twists and turns around it, it would be easier actually than the other map because there's more uh, <clears throat> there's more area for the same towers to hit um, enemies like multiple passes through. So we're going to go with that. Tower defense strategy is something for another day. I'm also going to go and add some of these invisible walls so that you can't build over the path. Alright, there we go, so now we can't build over that thing. Uh, there's a few things I'm going to need to do, also. One is rename this to, how about, level 2, instead of room 1, because that's not a helpful name. Two, instead of, let's say I also need to clear this creation code, for now. There's going to be other stuff going in there, but not now. Um, having like the setup stuff happen in the uh, creation code of the first room, I'm going to have that happen in <clears throat> the creation code of the controller object. Uh, so, for example, this enumerated constant list is going to go in, uh, in the creation code of uh, the controller game setup. Everything else here, I think, is the same. This video is not, if I was going to apply, like, let's play terms to um, Game Maker videos, a blind uh, video. Like, I have done this before. The recording came out horribly, which is one of the reasons this took so long to come out. I have to re-record it now. But anyway, I do have notes on stuff on what I want to be doing here. So... Instead, in the room creation uh, events, the room creation code, I'm going to be defining a few other variables. So in level 1, I'm going to say level path equals level 1 path. This is level 1, yes, this is level 1. And next, level equals level 2. So this is the path that, um, so this is referring to the path resource that the enemies run along in this room, and this is referring to the room that is the next level. And I need to prefix these with global so that they can actually be used outside of this creation code. And similarly, let's copy this over to uh, level 2. This is going to be level 2 path, and since I don't have a level 3 right now, I'm just going to make that no one as a placeholder. Let's see. It's probably going to be a little while before I'm actually able to run the game, but there are a few things that I need to change before this will work at all. Where is it? I think an enemy. On create, instead of saying path start level one path, we're going to be saying path start global dot. What was it? Level path? I forget what I called the variable already. Global dot level path. All right. So it's going to be following whatever is stored in that variable. And I think everything else in here needs to be the same. That's all the enemies need to know is what path to start on. Also, 
in the controller's room start event, um, <clears throat> right now, in the room editor, I have all these, uh, like, solid walls blocking the, uh, the game overlay so that you can't place towers down on top of it. I have them defined in the room. I'm going to define those through code instead. So let's see. Every time the controller enters a new room, which is what the room start event is for, I need to use a couple for loops to, uh, to do this for me. And I'm going to write this out and explain what I'm doing at the end. Give me a moment. Okay, so these are basically two for loops that are going to run along the bottom and the uh, right side of the room and create a row of uh, invisible wall tiles there so that you can't drag any tiles, um, any towers onto them, rather. And with that said, I can get rid of all of these. Let's see. I'm going to go, come on. Game Maker Studio added a weird way of uh, deleting objects in bulk. You have to hit, like, Control and Shift. You would think they would have had a uh, simpler keyboard uh, shortcut to do that, considering it's kind of a common operation to delete things in bulk. Anyway, those are gone. Next I need to handle the buttons, because these are also um, ideally going to be the same in every room, unless you want to have like challenge mode or something where uh, you have to clear a map using only the regular towers or something. In this game that I'm making here, it would probably not be that bad because it's not balanced very well, but if you were to refine the mechanics a little bit, it could be an interesting challenge. Uh, so once again, let me go and write some code out and then explain what I'm doing later. Alright, here we go. This is essentially just the same thing that is happening in this creation code of these buttons, except instead of defining the, uh, the type and cost and everything in the creation code, it's happening uh, in here. And additionally, uh, the instance IDs are being saved to the controller object as, um, as variables, so in case they need to be accessed later, for example, uh, assigning the type and tower type and cost and everything down here. Now, I think I can go and delete these. Also, did I, like, for some reason I think I actually created, like, a quit button or something, but I don't remember. I know there's an enum value that's, like, button type quit or something like that, but I don't remember if I actually filled that in and never. Anyway, I don't need that anymore. I don't need this anymore. I think the game will run now, although there are a few things that I should do first, such as, let's see... I think in this create event over here, a couple of these values that are like relevant to the particular map that you're on should also go in here. So alarm zero, round lives, currency, all that fun stuff, so it gets reset every time you go to a new room. And let's see, now I only need to uh, set up the mechanism to send you to a new room when you're done with the uh, when you're done with the wave. So this is where. It is determined if uh, there are any more enemies that could come marching along, and if there are not, if you're at the end of the uh, if you're at the end of the wave and there are no more waves to be had, you could immediately say go to the next room. But I want to have it wait a little while, so I'm just going to set alarm one equals I think uh, how about also four times room speed, and then in the alarm one event, alarm one, drag some code in here if next level is not equal to no one, then room go to next level, and that should be prefixed with global. There we go. Alright, I think that's all I need to do, so it's probably going to crash as soon as I try to run the game, but the error messages that it displays when it does that will be somewhat important to figure out what's going wrong. Let's see what happens. Or it could, like, give me some completely unpredictable behavior, and I should probably get rid of that splash screen um, for future reference. For some reason, there was a major update to Game Maker Studio. It's now uh, 1750. I think the previous version I was using was, like, 1690 or something. And for some reason, I reset the global game settings for all of my projects to tell it to use the splash screen, which I, I don't know why my computer is suddenly... I died. I don't know why my computer is suddenly having trouble running Game Maker Studio, but... Uh, let's try that again, this time with a little bit less dying. Okay, so fine, you're gonna block the... you're gonna block the game? Th this is terrible. Alright, well, I'm gonna die. If I can save this game and, uh... 
and manage to get to the end of the wave somehow, that would be nice. Hang on. Ah, so close. It took me like three tries to get to uh, the end of my own game somehow, that's hilarious. Anyway, so yes, it did go to the next level as soon as that, uh, that one was over, but nothing happened because I forgot to mark this um, controller object as persistent. So it didn't set up anything when it finally got to the next level, so I'm going to have to go through all that over again. Um, the way I have the controller being created isn't the neatest. Uh, it's just being dropped in the, uh, the first room, so if you wanted to change the order of the rooms around, you'd have to do something about that. It's best, and I'm not going to do that here, but it's best if you were to create like a title screen, and then um, like a new game option. And when you hit new game, it's going to create the controller object, something like that, instead of... Uh, just having these rooms like this. But, that is a story for another day. Or not. I have no idea how long I want to drag out the series. Um, there is one more thing I definitely want to do eventually, which is like, tower upgrades. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. But at my current rate, I should probably not let this guy through. At my current rate, it's going to take a little while to actually uh, get there. I'm going to have like another year-long hiatus or something from this, and that that's not even hitting the thing at all. Could I stop failing at my own game, please? Thank you. Alright, there we go. So, let's see, is it going to start in a couple seconds, or is it not going to start? Alright, there it goes. Um, and after this, it should play like normal. Uh, there's the ways of enemies. They're the same for every map, because I haven't defined anything different for them. If you wanted to define uh, different ways for different levels, you could very well do that. It would take a little bit of reworking the existing code to get it to work properly, but uh, this is, for some reason, appearing off, slightly off-center. And is that because... I really hope I didn't do this design decision, but... Did I duplicate code in uh, the uh, create events for the enemies? And tell every type of enemy to start the path, like... Instead of using Invent Inherited? I did, didn't I? Alright, well, that's a slight problem, and uh, the way that this computer is behaving is also a slight problem, but I could have sworn I talked to... Write this down, guys. My computer literally can't handle Game Maker Studio. Alright, well, now that that finally settled down, I'm going to take this line and drop it in another uh, script called How About enemy start, and that's just going to be, let's see, enemy start, a somewhat faster way of writing path start, global dot level path, speed, uh, stop, and absolute is true. Also, since uh, speed differs for different enemies, argument zero, that's going to be passed as an argument, so Instead of having to write out that long line every time, I could just tell the enemy in the create event path start uh, with whatever speed they want to take. So, going to, what was the speed? 2. So, enemies start at the speed of 2. This one is a speed of 4, like the regular ones. Fast, I want to say it was like 6 or 8. 6. So, enemies start at the speed of 6, and enemies slow with a speed of uh, 2. Alright, let's see, I can get out of there, close all of these, what was it, oh, an idea that I had like just now, a couple seconds ago, to balance the fire towers, instead of having them do damage, that's, that's an enemy boss, not a fire tower, come on, open the fire tower, thank you, instead of having them do damage, or, or where is the code that actually deducts HP for the bullets, is that in here, bullet fire? Um, it's only going to go and uh, burn, so it's not going to deduct any HP at all. So it's going to set them on fire, and that's going to be its damage output. And I did make a bunch of changes. I am don't want to run the game anymore, believe it or not, because I just don't want my computer to like explode anymore that it already has. But I've made a bunch of changes since I last closed it out, so I probably should at least do that. Anyway, let's see, we're going to go and... This is probably going to spell my demise, because I have zero currency, zero money, whatever, and all I can do is burn, and I don't know, okay, that will be able to take them out, so it's not, it's not over. 
But yes, yeah, so it's not doing any damage aside from the burn, which uh, does instantly make this a little bit less overpowered than it already is. Um, that's wave two. Uh, fast towers. I haven't. I didn't do the math to like calculate damage for seconds, but I think the fast towers are better than the the regular ones. I want to say they do more damage per second. Plus the bullets. I don't know. Did the bullets move at different speed? Do I have the bullets moving at different speed? I don't know if I have the bullets moving at different speed. But that would also help because it uh, would reduce the chance of the bullets to miss. Anyway, I'll see you in level 2. Alright, there we go. Um, see, I don't think... It didn't wait that time before jumping to the next level. And I'll have to look at that. And I'll post an annotation there describing what that does. But, um, enemies have enemies have spawned in. See, I, I really need to put a stop to this. I'm doing terribly here. I'm really doing terribly here. Alright, well hopefully that'll be enough to keep them from getting through. And uh, there come the fast guys already. Which will uh, dilute my efforts to stop them a little bit. But, uh, you get the general idea. The enemies have uh, spawned on the proper path this time. Using that fancy uh, shortcut script. And I'm gonna die. Is it too late? For... It might be too late. I'm dead. Ooh, I'm not dead. Cool. Alright. Yes, yeah, so I'm very uh, enthralled by tower defense games that I made myself, don't ask. Anyway, like I said earlier, it might be a little while before I make another one of these videos because I do want to finally... I've had this problem with my computer not wanting to run Game Maker Studio since, like, the beginning. But I really want to uh, sort this out before I continue. Uh, like I said earlier, I do want to have, like, upgradable towers and stuff like that. I don't know if you can see, but it's even, like, lagging running this very simple tower defense game. And it shouldn't be doing that. And I don't know why. I don't really want to get a new computer, but... Alright, never mind. I do have other plans for a future series like this, this tower defense series. I'm uh, making other genres of games. We'll see how that goes. But for now, um, I hope you all enjoyed that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. There's a download link to this in the description of this video, as always. And I will see you all later.